All right, let's finish up this lecture. Um, I didn't plan this out super well, so I don't have that much left to go over. Famous last words. But anyways, um, suppose X is any subset of G. Um, this is the... Um, I guess we might also call this the group generated by X, or the subgroup generated by X. Um, is the smallest um, subgroup of G, which contains x well if you see that then you might be worried oh well does it always exist can we always find such a subgroup is there always a smallest subgroup which contains x well um we always have one namely g g is a subgroup of g which contains x and so we've always got something in there and so yeah this turns out to be fine and in fact, we have this proposition, which isn't proven in my lecture notes, but, but, blah. but because we have not that much left to do, I'm just going to go ahead and prove it. X is the intersection of all subgroups H of G such that X is contained in H. So the smallest subgroup of G which contains X is also the intersection of the collection of subgroups of G um, such that um, X is a s all the subgroups of G which contain X. And by the way, this is a subgroup of G, and we know that because of the last thing that we proved. So anyways, we want to prove equality, so we want to prove both directions. So, let's see here. So, say, um, So uh, this is the smallest subgroup of G which contains X. So well, first of all, this is a subgroup of G, and um, it, it, it is a subgroup of G such that. Um, uh, H is, where did H come from? I'm sorry, should be X. No, 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 I was right, I was right. Uh, intersection of all subgroups H. Okay, so this is such that, um, X, rather the set X is contained in the subgroup generated by X. These are capital X's, by the way. I, it's whatever. Um, and so, um, so this is one of the subgroups that this intersection is taken over. And so this particular subgroup is going to contain the intersection of all H and G such that X is a subset of H. And that's because um, this subgroup is one of the elements in this intersection. And when we take this intersection, we can only possibly, we can only possibly make it smaller. We can only possibly make the subgroup smaller by taking this intersection. And so therefore, this is going to be a subset of, or it's going to be a, we're going to have containment this way. I 
guess you could technically say it's a subgroup, but I don't care. All we care about is containment. So now we want this is contained in this. So how do we do that? I think it's something like let h and g be such that x is contained in h. So h is a subgroup of g which contains so this is easy. H is a subgroup of G such that X is contained in G. Um, so by definition, we have the subgroup generated by X is contained in H because the, scrub, the subgroup generated by X is the smallest subgroup of G, which is contained in H. And so, by definition, this we have this containment. Um, and this holds for all such H, and thus um, X is contained in the intersection of all H and G such that X is contained in H and hence we have equality. Okay, cool. So that's that. What else do we have? Um, Nx is the smallest normal subgroup of G containing X. Okay, so this is the same thing. This ends up being the intersection of all normal subgroups of G which contain it. The intersection of all normal subgroups of G which contain X. And the proof is almost identical. Um, is there anything different? Um, no, there's literally nothing different. Because here, here's how we would do the proof. Watch this. Do. 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 And then, of course, we'd have a little n here. And we'd put that in everywhere. And so I'm going to, I'm writing this in like, like a little smaller just so that it's kind of, you could kind of erase that in your head if you wanted. It'd be nice to have um, like multicolored uh, markers, but that's way outside of my price range. So I guess we're going to have to deal with me writing things a little smaller to be able to fit everything on there. But yeah, this is, it's almost, it's like the exact same proof. You just switch up some of the symbols. And so yeah, there you go. And that's the end of this lecture.